a short demonstration of the operation of the standard handcuff. Uh, the major components are what is called the double strand, that is where the two outer plates uh, form this uh, gap here. The single strand, which passes through that gap and has this uh, ratchet edge on it. Then uh, in inside, normally not visible, except for the fact that this is a cutaway, we have this red bar that is called the ratchet pull. Uh, this yellow component here is a leaf spring. And this blue bar is the double locking bar. And we'll review uh, the essentials of how all of these work and operate together to make a handcuff work. So the first thing is that when a handcuff is applied, the single strand is pushed through until it loops around. The, uh, it then comes back around. And notice as the ratchet teeth begin to engage with the pole, the pole is able to move up and down on a spring allowing you to tighten the single strand until it is sufficiently tight around whatever it is that you are handcuffing. Now, the single strand cannot pull out because these opposing uh, teeth won't allow it. But if you notice, you can still apply some inward pressure and the single pole will continue to move. So in that state, uh, a handcuff is still shimmable. We'll get to that in a minute. But in order to unlock a uh, single strand, a single locked handcuff using the key, this is the standard key that came with this uh, handcuff, simply insert it into the keyhole, get it so that there isn't a reflection there, and I turn the key slightly, about 90 degrees, and it lifts that ratchet pull up and out of the way. And so it's open. If we relock it, as soon as you release the pressure on the key, the key returns uh, roughly to its resting position. You just move it back into alignment with the keyhole and withdraw it. Uh, now, double locking a handcuff. Um, a very large number of handcuff designs will use the Push pin style uh, double lock. Smith and Wesson sometimes has a uh, slide cut in here that the post on the back of the handcuff key will engage and slide the bar over. And uh, there are a few other variants, mostly European, where there is simply a finger activated lever or button of some kind. But anyway, the post is inserted into this hole in the side and pressed inward and you can now see the double locking bar slide over. Now you may notice that this protrusion on the double locking bar meets up with this bump on the end of the ratchet pole. So even if I squeeze I cannot push the single strand in further and even with the key Normally, I cannot raise the pole out of the way. In order to defeat the, uh, in order to uh, unlock the handcuffs at this point, the key has to be inserted, turned 180 degrees until it pushes the sidebar over. Uh, that usually indicates a uh, that click uh, is often heard to indicate successfully unlocking. The handcuff, then uh, the standard unlocking action can be applied by turning the key 270, 270 degrees back the other way and opening the handcuff. Now we'll return this to the locked position. Now uh, when a handcuff is single locked it is uh, vulnerable to a shimming attack. So we have two different types of keys here. We also have two examples of shims. There are a few other variations, but uh, they all work in essentially the same way. Uh, the major styles are the uh, key style, it has this bow area 
and a hole so it can be placed on a keychain. You can get it in either a split or solid tip. Uh, and then there is this small straight uh, shim, which is much simpler and just has a key for a uh, little hole that uh, you can slip a bit of string through. So let's uh, use that. It's a little bit easier on here because I don't want to damage the uh, Perspex cover. So in almost every handcuff there is some variance in manufacturing tolerances. So I'm able to slide this shim between the teeth of the single strand and the body until I hit the edge of that ratchet pull right there. Now if I push in slightly on the single strand, the pole will slowly lift until I am able to insert the tip of the shim under the ratchet pull, and I will then, as long as I keep pressure on the shim, be able to withdraw the single strand of the handcuff and now the handcuff is open. So uh, this is why a police officer will usually engage that double lock and why handcuff manufacturers are usually trying to find ways to make it easier for uh, police officers to engage that double lock easily and uh, with a minimum of fussing about with keys or trying to find a little pinhole or something uh, when they are trying to deal with a uh, resisting uh, detainee. But most uh, criminals do not in fact carry handcuff keys and don't know how to operate them so they will frequently not engage the double lock. If the double lock is engaged you will need to construct some sort of improvised tool uh, in order to fit into that keyhole and disengage that double locking bar. Uh, often a uh, small bobby pin like this can suffice uh, or a sufficiently thin paper clip. Uh, the trick is finding a paper clip that is thin enough to fit between the post and the edge of the keyhole while still having the strength to overcome uh, the deadlock on the uh, double locking bar. So, that is the essentials of handcuff operation and use. So, thank you very much.